class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing the Sharks NHL 2021 entry draft preview. And the draft is still a few weeks away. However, the draft lottery was just last night, and the Sharks came in at 7th overall, and they ended up leaving at seventh overall in fact there weren't really many changes at all in the draft lottery last night the only one and it was rather marginal was the seattle kraken moving from third overall to second overall and then the ducks consequently dropping from second overall to third overall and so the sharks will be picking at seventh but this is still their highest draft pick all the way back since 2003 when they drafted milan mccallick at sixth overall so the sharks are pretty much going to get at the very least a pretty solid player you know compared to last season where they were drafted at 31st overall where it's a bit of a shot in the dark and not to say you know it's impossible to find a good player here I mean we saw just a few years ago at 32nd overall very very close a player like Sebastian Ajo for the Carolina Hurricanes got drafted at that point but in the last 20 years at 31st overall the best player might be Jacob Markstrom and after that it dropped to like players like Tyler Pitlick and Brendan Lemieux but when you look just in the last 10 years at 7th overall you have players like Quinn Hughes, Darnell Nurse, Matt Dumba, Mark Shifley, Ivan Provorov. These are all incredible incredible players and I don't want to say you're guaranteed to get a player of this caliber because the Sharks might get incredibly unlikely and their 7th overall pick never really pans out at the NHL level but you're pretty you know you have a very high chance of getting at the very least a second line forward and potentially even a solid first line forward or a top four defenseman and potentially even a top pairing defenseman when you're picking in this position now going into this year's draft it actually kind of a bit murky of where a lot of these players are going to land for a couple of reasons you know this year doesn't have a ton, a ton of super high-end talent. There's no Connor McDavid level player, Austin Matthews level player at this year's draft. And so a lot of the top five is sort of, we're picking between a lot of very good, solid players, but not any incredible high-end players. And so at seventh overall, there are a lot of different options and directions that the Sharks can actually take. A second reason why it's a bit more murky this year is because of the fact that the COVID situation affected a lot of these teams, a lot of these players' junior leagues. And so they couldn't necessarily give it their all over this season because they couldn't really play full seasons in their respective leagues leagues and so we didn't really get a feel of their draft year years which are usually you know one of the most important uh sort of factors in using to judge whether or not you want a player this early on in the draft having said that though there are still a multitude of very solid players available for the san jose sharks and starting off i will specifically target here kent johnson in terms of mock drafts he's usually expected to be drafted around this point in the draft seventh eighth overall and kent johnson is a centerman a very solid skilled centerman can score goals can get assists can play a bit of a two-way game as well and another little plus i guess you could say on top of that is he actually has a connection to another sharks prospect that they have Thomas Bordalo. Both of these players were on the University of Michigan team in the NCAA this season. Uh, Bordalo was the that team's leading scorer. Kent Johnson was actually that team's second leading scorer. And so, if you know Bordalo says there's some sort of connection there, why not pick up a player like Ken Johnson and have a bit of a connection there? It certainly couldn't hurt the San Jose Sharks, and Johnson is a solid prospect otherwise. Next would be Dylan Gunther, addressing a bit more of an organizational need, picking up a left winger. He is a very, very, very gifted scorer, could be one of the best scorers at this year's draft. In fact, at in terms of mock drafts, he is predicted to at times go up all the way to second overall, and then at times actually drop to around where the Sharks are drafting at seventh overall. So if Gunther is indeed available, it certainly wouldn't be a bad thing to actually just draft him at this position. As I said, the Sharks definitely could use some scoring wingers I mean honestly they could use really any solid draft pick at this point because their prospect pool isn't fantastic but Gunther could definitely be someone who could be at the front of the Sharks list and really the main limiting factor for taking a player like him would be if he's drafted prior to the seventh overall selection next would be another winger William Eklund and in terms of mock drafts he's usually predicted to be drafted at sixth overall right before the San Jose Sharks by the Detroit Red Wings he is a very very strong 
winger probably while he maybe doesn't have as good of a ceiling as Dylan Gunther who I just talked about previously he seems to have maybe a bit of a higher floor he was a very very improved player in the Swedish league this season very very solid season and so while he may not make it past the Detroit Red Wings as many are predicting if he is indeed available as I said the Sharks could definitely use a winger and I would say if Gunther is no longer available Eklund could definitely be a solid fallback for him next would be defenseman Brant Clark and you may remember last season when I was talking about last year's draft I had said that the Sharks shouldn't really be picking any defensemen in their first few draft picks and they should be specifically targeting forwards because they absolutely needed forwards however when you are picking this early on in the draft sometimes you end up in a situation where you kind of just end up taking the best player available. And if Brant Clark indeed ends up being the best player available at 7th overall, it would probably end up being a mistake to skip over him. For instance, if Gunther ends up going 2nd overall, and if William Eklum ends up indeed going 6th overall to the Detroit Red Wings, Brant Clark would absolutely be a very solid choice. Honestly, on top of that, while last year I was very against drafting defensemen for the Sharks, this year I feel as though Ryan Merkley didn't necessarily take the step forward that I was expecting and while Mario Ferraro did the Sharks definitely aren't super you know abundant in terms of defensive prospects and Brant Clark could definitely still fit in rather well into the Sharks prospect pool and so he could still be a very solid choice he's a strong power play guy he's still got a solid defensive game as well and he would be an all-around good choice for the Sharks. And finally, the final player on my draft list here is a bit off the board is Jesper Wallstedt, a goaltender for the San Jose Sharks here. This is definitely a pretty controversial pick. Usually you don't pick goaltenders this early on in a draft because usually goaltenders will take a few years to develop and most teams will want to specifically target either a forward or defenseman who could play as soon as next year, if not just two years down the line. And goaltenders can definitely be a a bit more tricky to find most of these top teams have been finding their you know uh, future starter goaltenders in you know the second round like with John Gibson or Connor Hellebuck or goaltenders like this but the Sharks goaltending situation isn't necessarily all that great at this point Martin Jones is potentially and I would say even likely to be bought out this offseason and then the fallback that the Sharks have between Coach Nash and Melna Shuck don't necessarily inspire a ton of confidence to be starters for the San Jose Sharks over the next few years Coach Nash may be with a bit more potential but still not really really there and Jesper Wallstadt is projected to be the best goaltender available at this year's draft and if the Sharks want to go with a bit of an off the board type of pick at seventh overall they could potentially secure a future starting goaltender for themselves with this pick. You know, it's not, uh, you know, completely unheard of to take a goaltender somewhat early on in the draft. Most recently, we saw just two years ago at 13th overall, the Florida Panthers drafted Spencer Knight. And while goaltenders, as I said, usually take a few years, Spencer Knight actually made his NHL debut this season. So just two years after his draft and actually looked very good in that debut. He actually played his first playoff game also in his career this season. And in that first game against the Tampa Lightning was spectacular and honestly stole the game for the Florida Panthers to keep them alive in that series and so there is a bit of a history with that in taking a goaltender early on in the draft and so the Sharks really want to address an organizational need and potentially find a starting goaltender for their future. Wallstat would be an off the board pick but not an unheard of one that I would be incredibly surprised by. But that will do it for this draft preview. As I said, it is a bit murky this season. We do not exactly know what the top 10 is going to look at. Basically, the only thing that most people are agreeing on is that Owen Power will be the first overall pick by the Buffalo Sabres this season. But one thing seems to be for sure is that the Sharks will be getting a very, very solid player at this year's draft. Class dismissed.